Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and first off, Happy New Year. If you're a regular to the channel, you've probably noticed I haven't done a whole lot over the holidays, and that's because, well, not a whole lot happened, so I decided to take holidays. I hope you guys had as good of time off as I did, and it's time to get back into the world of game development. Now that we're stepping into the beginning of 2020, some people are doing a bit of looking back, including the Godot engine, and I decided, hey, this is kind of fun, so I'm doing the same thing. So what this is, is a look back at the last decade with an asterisk of development with the world of game development. Now, I'm throwing that asterisk in because uh, the world of game development started over a decade ago, but we've only had access to it for about the last six years. So we're going to go through a quick run-through of the history of Godot, and what you see in front of you is Godot 1.1. Now, weirdly enough, 1.0 is not easily available for download, and uh, there's not a whole lot of differences, to be honest. 1.0 was the first open-source release, and then 1.1 was a kind of a polished with better 2D functionality release of the same thing. And you can tell the UI is a bit bare bones. We don't have proper um, menu support, but really if you look at it, it looks quite a bit like what we ended up with. So what we ended up with, well, as of recording, this is the newest release. This is Godot 3.2 Beta 5. Now we're waiting for Godot 3.2 to be released any day now. But like I said, we're on Beta 5. So again, it's going to be any day now. But you can see the UI has definitely come a long way. Uh, we've got the ability to instant sub nodes. We've got the asset library built in for importing from, you know, the web. We've got multiple platform supports. We now have uh, C Sharp support in there, in addition to um, typed uh, GD script, a whole bunch of improvements there, live reload, debugging, and all of that kind of stuff. It came a long way in that period of time. So what we're doing is taking a bit of a look back. Now, the reason why this is all happening right now is because Godot just did a decade re retros in retrospective uh, post up on their blog. And of course, I will link that in the linked article down below as well as all the other links we are going to look at today. And I'm going to skim over a little bit because we're actually going into a little bit more detail later on. Now if you don't know the history of Godot, it started 10 years ago, thus a decade back. Um, it was between uh, Juan Linetsky and Ariel Manzer. If I boggled either of your name, I apologize, but I've consistently been calling Juan Juan all this time, so hopefully I'm right. Um, anyways, those two started this off back quite a while ago. Now, the key thing here is going to be an underlying part of the story. They're both based out of Argentina. And from what I understand, Argentina's economy is... We'll go with fragile. Um, so there are a lot of problems with actually running with an importing software into Argentina and for basically releasing and making software out of Argentina, mostly based around their economy. Argentina in general is a very strange place, a very weird dichotomy of um, influences on, there's a lot of uh, Western European colonial influences on Argentina, even though it is in the middle of South America. It's a very interesting place and I really want to go there one of these days, but it's not the place you run a business from for reasons we will see as we go through this. But they actually ran or they worked with a business called Okam back in the day. Or Okam. I have no idea how you pronounce that, but I'll go with Okam. Um, but basically, these guys did technology for Okam. Uh, they did their own in-house engine that was used to make several games, including uh, contract work for companies such as Square Enix, Turner, and so on, plus their own game, Dog... M M I'm not even going to try. Um, and you see, again, Argentina is a key part. And you see here, it's unstable politically and economically, which made it very difficult and stressful for the company to continue operating. So then somewhere around 2014, we're going to come back to that date in just a second. That is when he decided to release it as a public source thing. It was released out there. There was a bunch of complaints. The 1.1 was released adding 2D functionality. Now, initially, this was basically just people complaining to Juan and asking for fixes about crap that was there. Nobody was contributing back and so on. Feedback was sent out. And and then eventually Godot 2 came out. We'll go through all that in more detail later on. And then 2.1 came out the end of 2016. Now at this point in time, it actually started growing. All along, 2D support was great. 3D was... It was there. Uh, we'll go with that. Uh, shortly after, uh, Remy uh, Verschelied... I've never actually said your name before, Remy... Um, uh, quickly took over the project management side of things. He is still a fixture of it right now. Uh, they began working towards 3.0. Uh, there is actually a bit of a warning here. And the funny thing is, I said in my previous video, one of the biggest weaknesses that Godot has is its dependency on core developers. And some people in the comments said, well, that would you never lose them. That could never happen. Well, to be honest, it came damn 
close to happening. Um, we will read that in just a second. But at this point, Godot 3.0 came out. There was a huge changes in Godot 3.0. We saw C-sharp support, updated GUI, and then the kicker here is this line right here. To be completely honest, my plan up to this point remained unchanged. I wanted to leave the country and start over a new game development company somewhere else. Um, you couldn't work at a, um, Argentina for the reasons already given, so he was looking at basically, you know, taking a tech job somewhere. And from doing what he was doing, he was actually getting um, a lot of people uh, offering him money, and obviously I can see that. I think Juan could get a job in a heartbeat if he wanted. But then he saw people were actually successfully kickstartering courses around the Godot engine, and that's how they started funding Godot. And the Kickstarter campaign was quite successful, and on top of that, we've had a couple of companies come on board, such as Microsoft, um, to support the C-Sharp development, and they've managed to hire several other people onto the team. So that's kind of where they went with things. Now, everything wasn't really perfect, and if you went through the Godot 3 experience, you probably saw this happen. It's Godot 3 switched to OpenGL ES. Now, ES, I believe, stands for Embedded Systems. I'm not 100% sure on that, but basically it is a stripped-down subset of Godot, mostly meant for mobile, but it runs on desktop platforms as well. They figured that this subset was ideal for Godot going forward, so they moved to Godot, uh, sorry, they moved to OpenGL ES 3.0 and they left 2.0 behind. Now, the problem is on Android, at the very least, support for OpenGL ES 2 sucks. There are, sorry, ES3 sucks. The number of devices that just couldn't run with it was terrible. So they had to do a backport and bring OpenGL ES3 back. Now we've also got a bit of a fork in the road here in terms of what is happening now. And they have split the team, which basically means Juan is working on uh, Godot 4.0, the new renderer that is going to be in Vulkan, uh, while um, 3.2 is the current release, again, in beta 5. Um, and then those two will ultimately merge together and become a new thing. So in a nutshell, that was Godot over the last 10 years. Now what you can see here is I have been following Godot since the very public beginning. Uh, very early on, it was announced. So I've been covering this since January of 2014. So this is pretty much six years in the public that this has been going on. And you can see here, this is the original Godot. It has changed quite a bit in the meantime. Um, I don't know what the hell I was doing over here in terms of these screenshots that are missing, uh, but this was a post back in, uh, so again, 2014, January, when it was first announced. And then a little bit later, December of 2014. Wow, that's weird. So it took a while. Um, so basically, a full year later, 1.0 milestone was released. As you see, Godot changed quite a bit from the look. Um, and this was kind of day one. Now, 2D was obviously the emphasis right there. 3D was just kind of, yeah. Um, and then the big thing that happened next was the 1.1 release. Now, this was all about making 2D so much better. So there was a large rewrite to the 2E engine. Uh, we got visual shaders. They went away for a little while, but they did come back. 2D materials, 2D lighting, dynamic lighting, normal mapping, and so on. I think we also got uh, animation of characters there. We got the visual shader editor was added in, auto-completion, um, and so on. So we got a lot of improvements, but it was all about 2D at this point in time. And then we moved on to February of 2016, and we've got Godot Engine 2.0 released. Um, we had a number of different things here. A lot of them were at the core level. So we've got uh, scene inheritance. This is actually really fundamental to the way things work. You can now inherit a scene as a node hierarchy structure. And actually, if you've been using Godot for a while, this inheritance probably almost seems... Um, you know, second nature at this point. So you can not only uh, instance, but also can inherit scenes now. So you can build your game up into a bunch of scenes. Uh, there is also a change at this point to a text-based, TOML-based uh, screen format in a sort of scene format, in addition to the binary format that is out there and a number of different changes. So we got new editor features, a new layout, new theming, um, and so on. So this was a really nice refinement version. And this is when the world started to notice Godot for the most part. Godot 1.0 was a pretty small subset of the developer community. Um, Godot 2 is where it really started to shine. Now all along, I actually did um, tutorials for basically from the point that Godot was released. I started doing tutorials, I think. And it was around Godot 2 that I really started seeing a pickup in interest on it. Now, if we fast forward a little bit more in time, we are now into August of 2016, and we got Godot 2.1. So we got here the new asset sharing platform, the asset lib that I showed very briefly a second ago, where you can download uh, plugins and so on directly from a centralized hub. That was added. A new plugin API was added, dynamic font support, uh, 
internationalized editor UI so we can now have fully translated versions to various different language. Uh, and so on. We got live script reloading at this point in time. A profiler was added. High DPI support was added. Although, interestingly enough, I am running this in 4K. And this here, let me see, it's this one right here, is Godot 1.1. It actually is surprisingly okay looking. Um, but we had so on drag and drop support was added, context menus were added, things that you probably are actually taking for granted right now were all added in Godot 2.1. And my God, did I make uglier looking video titles back in those days. And we will continue on. So Godot 3, this was quite a bit later, but this was a huge release. Godot 3 came out in January of 2018. Uh, now there were some really great things here and not so great. I also did a completely new, or I started a new, it's ongoing if you're a regular this channel, tutorial series specifically about Godot 3. And here we got a new renderer. So this is where we moved to uh, OpenGL ES3 based renderer. And the cool thing about that renderer is it was fully PBR based. So you had, uh, uh, full principle BSDF um, material support, global illumination, post-processing, material and shader support, GPU particle systems, GLTF2 importing, improved OBJ importing, SVG, and then we got some really cool new features like GD Native, which is a really easy way to bind your native code to your uh, Godot side of the project. Um, Mono and C Sharp support first showed up. Now, this was infantile at this point in time, so you couldn't use it for mobile or anything like that, and it has been a very ongoing development for supporting C Sharp. And then we got visual scripting support in there, which was nascent and not really that useful, but it will improve over time. I'm not really sure what GD script was all about, um, but it got improvements at the very least. A new audio engine VR support was added here. New physics back and IPv6 support, WebGL 2.0 support, auto tiling, and so on. There were a ton of improvements in Godot 3.0. And I would say Godot 3 is really where it started hitting the mainstream of support. And then we've got Godot 3.1. Technically, this is the final release uh, as of right now when I'm recording this video. And as I mentioned earlier on, the Godot EG, um, GLES3 renderer did not work ideally in all environments, more constrained to mobile, bad driver support, or Android, really made ES3 a bad implementation option for a lot of people, so the ES2 renderer was backported. We also got some really cool new features like optional typing, so uh, instead of being an inferred type language, you could actually have it, or dynamically typed, you can have it actually so you could define what types the variables are, Purely optional. Uh, revamps to the 2D, new tile set editor. The old way was really convoluted. Now it's only minorly convoluted. Uh, we got uh, 2D skeletons, 2D mesh supports. And I think this was when we got visual shaders back because they went away for a little while, but they might've come back in three. So you know, three or 3.1 got the visual shader support back again. C-sharp improvement include a whole lot. Media microphone input, uh, VCS or visual co um, sorry, uh, version control system support got improved and so on. A ton of improvements happened there. And then on top of that, now we have 3.2. Now I don't think I did a link for 3.2. Oh, I did. Ha, good on me. Uh, so this is 3.2 alpha was released. This was a first, this is kind of the timeline. The first public release of 3.2 available for testing was back in October of last year. And like I said, we're at beta five. Godot 3.2 should be the shipped version any day now once we kind of, uh, you know, work out the kinks there, the entire idea between alpha and beta releases. Um, this one has a lot of improvements along the lines of uh, C-sharp support improvements have gotten better. And there's just kind of improvements across the way. The cool thing is you can basically look at 3.2 as the first version where C-sharp is a full-blown production uh, standard. Now, if you want to learn more about what's in 3.2 upcoming, I've actually done some more in-depth videos on it, so you can actually walk through and see what the new details are. One uh, 3.2 is fully released, I will do a follow-up video of here's what's new and here's why it's great. Uh, but really, this is where we are right now. And we're looking at and we're going to head on all the way back in a second. Godot 4 is the next version. We'll get back to that in just a second. Now, one thing that is really interesting is all of the stuff that we have looked at so far. If you are interested, you can actually go here to, we are at uh, downloads.tuxfamily.org. I will link that in the linked article down below as well. And you'll notice you can actually get any version of Godot going all the way back to 1.0. Oddly enough, sorry, 1.1. Oddly enough, 1.0 builds are missing for some reason. I don't really know what's going on there, uh, but all the way up to the 3.2 betas that we are working with right now. So if you want, go back to time, 1.0, you will see that 
not only are the various different operating systems all there in the different implementations, but all the export templates required to run it on various different platforms are there as well, including demos that you can load up and run with. So if you want to go back in time with Godot, all the way back to da, 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 this, you can. So if that's what you want to do, you can do it. So I will toss that link with the link down below, but some definite interesting stuff going on. And then as mentioned, Godot 4.0 is in development. The big thing about Godot 4.0 is going to be that new renderer. So that's hopefully we're also going to get some of the things that have been most asked for, some performance optimization, uh, things like occlusion of calling, better calling. Uh, so hopefully more complex scenes you can draw without the performance hit that you currently get. Um, and then of course, Vulkan. Now Vulkan is... Um, yeah, it's pretty much looking like the future unless you live in Apple land with Apple is being Apple. Uh, but that is what we were looking at there. You can see some of the details here. So 3.2 will hopefully release this month in January of 2020. And we have a tentative release for uh, 4.0 was mentioned here. Where the heck did it go? Afterwards, Vulcan will become the master branch. Plan is not to add a bunch of new features. Um, uh, I swore I had a date when they were working on it. So uh, I thought they were planning to do about middle of the year. Now, that's never going to work out for the most part. And best laid plans never work out. But what's going to happen after January of 2020 with 3.2 ships, 4.0 will become the in-development branch. Everybody will move on to that. Uh, except for, and one of the cool things that's happened with Godot is they are doing long-term support versions of it. So Godot 3.2 should continue to get uh, patches for security reasons, performance reasons, and that kind of stuff. Just not new features. All the new features will be moved into Godot 4.0 going further. Uh, further, sorry. And that is it. That is basically the Godot game engine's progress over the last decade. So again, while we only got access to it in 2014, it was an in-house engine that has been around since 2020. And now that I've done this, you know, kind of look back, we did just change decades again. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to do a similar thing for like the what happened in the last... Um, decade for unity and unreal engine and i may do a similar video of those for uh, of those engines as well if you are interested but anyways that is it i'm curious i have one question for you first off I, got, I guess i got two questions for you when did you first discover godot like what what version did you come on board and then if it was early enough what version was the most significant change for you um i think in my case i would actually say Maybe 2.1 was the biggest, even though 3.1 had like the move to C sharp and so on. The move to like 2.1, 2.2-ish kind of that area was where it got really kind of usable, especially for 2D development. Uh, but I can also see 3 is definitely one of those big steps as well. But I'm interested to hear what you thought evolutionarily for you was when Godot made the biggest step. And are you excited about Godot 4 on the horizon? Hopefully you are, and again, welcome to the new year. Sorry for the silence, but I am back. And uh, hopefully some game development-related news starts happening again so I can report it to you here on this channel. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye and Happy New Year.